Thanks for attending our Mastercam 2023 preview webinar today. My name is Matt Sump. I'm one of our Mastercam account executives for Illinois and Iowa. And then Devin Glass, one of our senior applications engineers, trainers, is with me here today. Hi, Devin. So the agenda is real simple here today. I'm going to pass it over to Devin here in a minute. He will highlight some of the new features we found pertinent in there. And then Devin will pass it back to me for a couple follow-up things when we're done. But expect this to last 30, 40 minutes or so. All right, guys. Again, my name is Devin Glass. I'm an applications engineer here at the Indiana office. I'm also the in-classroom trainer. So if you guys have been in uh, in class past year or so. Likely I've been at the front of the room here. I like last year. My task was to kind of go through and see the new features in 2020 or well back then it was 2022, but now 2023 and then try to see anything that stood out to me and stood out to would be helpful for our customer base here. Due to our lack of time, we're not going to be able to get through everything in there. And there's usually just a little tiny quality of life feature that I missed or that uh, maybe didn't have time to cover here. So at the end of this, Matt's going to have a link to where you can see a nice documented list of everything that's been added or what's planning to be added in 2023 in case you're curious to see those tiny details there. Also, like Matt said, this is all running off of the beta. I believe I'm on beta three and they currently have beta four out right now. Just keep in mind that I'm gonna be showing you screenshots, I'm gonna be showing you little videos and they are subject to change. You know, the UI might look a little bit different in this function, this might work a little bit differently in this function. Just keep in mind that even though we're really late in the development cycle, things can still be moved around and things can still change. So please uh, bear that in mind if uh, if what I talk about here in a second looks a little bit different than what looks like in the final release. One of the things I try to do during these webinars and especially on the rollouts is I try to not necessarily use CNC software as examples. There's just a couple instances where I had to just for sake of time. I try to use my own part files or I try to make example files so that way I get a good understanding of what's going on there. Hopefully you won't be seeing these demos anywhere else and uh, hopefully when the rollout comes out you'll be seeing brand new stuff and I'll have brand new stuff for us to look at there or depending on whoever does it of course. Let's just jump right into it. First just some general enhancements. A lot of it's going to be more design and drafting oriented so we'll just start her up here. So I'll click here. There we go. Taskbar, recent functions. So if you have your 2023, if you have your 2023 pin to the taskbar or you have Mastercam already open, you now right click on that icon and it'll show you recent documents in there that you can then launch straight from straight from the right mouse click. So if you're used to other softwares like you know Microsoft Word, Microsoft, really any Microsoft Office product, and I believe there's some other softwares that are eluding me at the moment, you can right click on the icon and pick the recent documents, which you know, now we can too. Top level editing was introduced in 2022, but now they've expanded on it in 2023, where now um, 2023 top level editing will support dimensions and notes. So you can see here, I'm double clicking on a note and immediately puts me into the note function. I then green check, double click on to a dimension that lets me move and manipulate the dimension, basically putting me in the smart dimension tool. Before and 2022 and prior, you'd have to make sure you go into that function before you click on the dimension or else it just thinks you're trying to delete or copy it or move it or something like that, or well, move it to a different level or something like that. But anyway, so that's now uh, been expanded to drafting entities. On the subject of drafting entities, we also now align note supports dimensions too. So align note can now grab a dimension. We can align it with another dimension. Um, which before was limited to notes. So here I'm moving the five inch um, uh, call out and lining it up with the one inch call out. So nothing too crazy just yet. Transform project now supports dimensions. Um, used to, you wouldn't be able to use transform project. So now in this example, I have dimensions on the bottom of my part. I have dimensions on the top of my part. I'm gonna grab the three inch and the five inch and I'm gonna use project to basically flatten them out onto one Z level um, along with the other dimensions there. Now, just a key uh, key point there, the project tool um, with dimensions only works with the depth mode. Currently, we don't have support for plane or surface mode, um, but we're hoping to get something like that in the future. Probably not for surfaces if it's any curvature, but um, definitely hope to see plane, um, plane project in the future if it's parallel. General continued, 
Um, so we now have the ability in 2023 to import a 2D PDF. So you open it up just like any other file. Now, as I mentioned before, I try not to use um, CNC examples, but this was a PDF provided by them. Uh, we did test a little bit from our PDFs and we did notice uh, a few few things that we're gonna report back to them and have, uh, have addressed there. I'm still waiting on that there. Um, but for the most part, we've had the best luck with PDFs that have been created by another CAD system that necessarily haven't been like printed out. So if you've had like a, if you have like a paper print and you scan it, um, you may see some, some inconsistencies there when you bring the PDF into MasterCam. However, um, as me and Matt were discussing, um, uh, you know, as me and Matt were discussing, uh, something's better than nothing in that case. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see some progress made there, but you can see, the idea is that we get all of this geometry and any different pages are set on different view sheets, different levels. And um, and they actually come in, again, if you have, if this came from a CAD file, it comes in a lot cleaner. Um, you'll actually get lines and arc geometry. I know I didn't really display that very well, but all that geometry in there are lines and arcs. So you could potentially do like a contour on the outside profile, that part granted that there's no scaling issues there. But in general, it's also a really great reference there. So it doesn't have to be on like another screen or another software opened up like Adobe. So definitely happy to see that. Trim to extend now can extend splines. This was always kind of a pain in my side whenever I was trying to ex use trim to extend the spline to like another line. It would usually give me a warning saying they do not intersect or something along those lines. Unfortunately, I don't have a video for this one because I thought it'd be pretty self-explanatory. We now just have that ability to extend a spline to another entity. Um, I've also found that if you have it on the 2D switch on, uh, it'll also extend it uh, flat. So definitely glad to see that come in. So the find holes function as of right now is nothing super, super crazy. Um, we had the ability to identify holes via the add history function, but they've now broken out that find holes um, they've now broken out that whole history creation into its own function. There's a couple advantages to this, but the major one is that now you can set it up to a shortcut key. Um, you can also now in 2023 tell it to create whole operations on import. So if you're constantly identifying and adding a history to your model after you've opened it, we could tell, excuse me, we could tell it to create that whole operation the moment that CAD files open, whether it's a step file, SOLIDWORKS file, as long as it's a solid model of some sort, uh, it will, uh, we can tell it to bring in that hold information. This is probably one of my most, my, my most anticipated features that are coming more on the design oriented side. And it has to do with positioning models. So in the model prep tab, there's now a solid position. What this basically allows us to do is pick one model or one solid as our, um, as our movable feature then one other solid as our collision feature. Well, it doesn't have to be one other, but anyway. You can see here, I can actually move this movable jaw, and once it makes contact with the interference or contact bodies, how Mastercam puts it, it's going to stop on contact. Um, so really, really great for fixture setup, really, really great for like if you have set toe clamps and you just wanted to push it up against the model. Um, uh, if you guys are used to the 3D tool creation, um, it's gonna look very familiar to what we have in the mating for mating an insert to a body, but now it's full-fledged into the, the normal UI. So again, really great. And just to walk you through the process, I'm grabbing the actual jaw. I'm then grabbing the stock, but I could really be multiple mod bodies after that. And then I'm adding additional geometry, the back end of that, that vice. Um, so that comes along for the ride, but it's really looking for the contact between my stock model and my uh, my movable jaw there. Push pull can now create chamfers on a solid edge. So we had the ability to create a fillet on a solid edge using push pull, but now we can create a chamfer on a solid edge. Um, again, pretty self-explanatory. It's just now a little toggle. Um, so there's that. Excuse me. We now have a little more organizational tools when it comes to solid components and view sheet grouping. So if I if I look here, we could see a screenshot. On the top is the solids manager. And we can see here that I can now create folders to help organize my different models. So if you have a very complex fixture that has like bolts and, and dowels, like in this case, or toe clamps or whatnot, you can now organize them in different folders. Doesn't change anything and doesn't change anything or how your workflow goes. It's just 
trying to make your make your solids manager a little more organized so you can grab all of a all of a list of solids in one fell swoop rather than having to you know look through a mile long list trying to see what's what there. Um, a real perk of the solids history tree in this case is if you import say a CAD file that has multiple bodies and they're already organized in the previous CAD system, um, I'm being told that the folder structure will be maintained in the solids history tree, but stay tuned on that because I need to do some testing on my end there and get a good example going. Um, on the bottom there, if you guys use view sheets a lot, you I don't know if you've ever ran into it, but I sure certainly have where I'll have like 10 or 15 view sheets and that bar just keeps getting filled further and filled further and further and everything gets a little too cramped. Um, so now we have the ability to create a folder system for view sheets. So you can see there, I got a blue folder that's currently collapsed that has only my part views. And then I have a fixture folder that has my different fixture views. And I can collapse and expand these folders as I need to and change the color of these folders so that way I can know what view sheets go with what. Um, so just a couple things to help with organization and help speed things up a little bit when it comes to uh, figure out where everything is. So next we'll go into general toolpath enhancements. So the first big thing that you might see or you might notice, not even probably offhandedly, um, is when you left click and drag operations, it's now going to basically treat it as the right click and drag behavior. Um, happened to me all it happens to me all the time in like 2022 and prior where I won't know it I'll just be moving my mouse and I accidentally hold my left left mouse click unknowingly I'm clicking and dragging an operation and as soon as I let go all of a sudden now my op three in this case is like after op four or some along those lines and then I have to go back and try to get everything back and oriented so to kind of combat that 2022 what they're doing now is when you left click and drag an operation it's giving you this prompt that's saying, hey, where do you want to move this? Where do you want to copy this? Or do you want to just cancel all together? Which basically gives you a chance to abort. So it is a second click, but I think it's going to save a lot of trouble, a lot of headache, um, especially on my end, uh, just from me just offhandedly actually uh, holding my left mouse click, not knowing it. Now import toolpaths has a recent document selection. So used to whenever you open up a, a file and the import toolpath operations you had to check remember this file and it would basically latch on to that file until you told it to stop um however you know you might be moving or picking from a part file that is you know very common work but then you might sw switch and start using a tap uh, operation library and all that kind of stuff so now we have the ability to keep track of all the tool or i'm sorry all the files that you've pulled from in the past and basically have a little drop down to get to them really easily. Um, I don't know what the limit is there. If I were to make a guess, I'd say it's the same as what we send the config for your recent documents at the top left. Um, but I have to really test that to see if that's truly the limit. If that is the case, then uh, it would be the same maximum and it would be 20, uh, 20 files. Um, but again, I gotta, I gotta push it to the limit to make sure there. So just something to make importing a lot faster. The advanced toolpath display can now show dirty tool motion. So when we have a dirty toolpath used to have just clear off your screen, you couldn't see what the motion looked like. Now in the advanced toolpath display, we could toggle on dirty toolpath motion and it's gonna show the previous toolpath of the dirty operation um, before it went dirty in this kind of very thin and black line. Now, of course you could change the color, you could change the style, you could change you know everything about the entity's appearance. Um, but by default, it's this kind of black thin line that shows you, hey, this is the, the dirty tool motion. Of course, when you regenerate it, it's going to take on the new tool motion and be the same blue, yellow. And if you have this on green, red for lead in, lead out and all that good stuff. So again, just kind of trying to be a more visual cue that you're currently looking at a dirty tool path, but also let you see what the motion used to look like before you hit regen. Because I know there's a few times in class where... I'm trying to show like the difference between two operations. And as soon as I hit regenerate, the toolpath just disappears. Um, it'd be nice to have a little display until the new one comes in. A couple mill turn enhancements. So first off, we have multiple steady rest support. So I just took a screenshot off of one of the example files that I had handy. Um, in 2022, we introduced the ability to use steady rest, but in 2023, we'll have the ability to use multiple steady rest, whether they're in tandem, whether they're on separate axes. 
um, that kind of thing there. If that's the case, if you guys do have multiple study rests, we now have the ability to do that in middle turn. So um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory there, I think. And now probably the biggest thing that's coming into Milturn and ultimately probably coming into Mal or the 2023, at least on the turning side, um, is B-axis turning. So before what we had to do to get B-axis turning is we had to get really, really uh, clever with our post development to get B-axis turning, but now it's fully integrated into 2023. And you can see here on the top profile, I'm using just an OD turning tool and I just set it to automatic tilt mode. And on the bottom section, it's really hard to see. I should have made them bigger. Um, we got vector lines that I've manually ma manipulated. Honestly, I could have taken out that jerky motion a little bit cleaner. Um, but now we have full B-axis turning support in 2023, um, which is going to be great for those of you guys who have been looking for it. Um, one thing I will tell you guys, and I wish I took a picture of it. I should have. I thought it was part of the video, but I misplaced or I must have mis misremembered there. Uh, the B-axis turning toolpath is a panel style toolpath, meaning that it's not your classic style where you go into the tool page and then you go into the cut parameters page and that's pretty much it. Um, it is on the actual side panel. It's tech, it's considered a manager and it lets you toggle through step by step. Of course, we'll probably have much deeper examples of this come roll out, so stay tuned for that. Now we'll get into the mill enhancements and there are a plenty. So first off, the new machine group setup. This is probably going to be the very the biggest change you're going to notice right off the bat when it's, when you're talking in mill. Now, rather than having that window that pops up that has just three pages, now we have a panel style layout like we had before. This first page is what you're used to seeing in the file page, but it also shows you a preview of the machine you have set in your simulation. The next page is your master model. So basically, what is the model you're trying to work towards? So in this case, that uh, bracket that I made. The third page is setting up stock. So we could use bounding box, we could use a solid. Um, so we can grab geometry and gets us into the bounding box feature there. And in this case, I already have my stock drawn, so I'm just gonna use um, the wireframe there. The next page is about fixtures. So we could set up our fixtures here, basically set up our fixtures here. Used to be in, or it, it still is in the simulator options page, and I'll get into that in here in a second. Um, but we can now set the fixtures while we're doing the part setup. And then tools, so we can set up our tool libraries. And one of the things I always do in class is assign our toolpath configuration, override defaults, modal values. And finally, we have simulator selection. Now, I was having a problem loading one of my simulator machines in, but this is where you'd set your simulation settings that was used to be in the simulator option. I guess it's still in the simulator options. One thing I will say is that that workflow there, there is a lot of steps to it, but most of it is optional. In fact, almost all of it's an optional. The only thing I would say is probably not optional is creating your stock, but even that could be optional. There's just a lot of things you miss out if you don't define your stock. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go through all those steps. You could just click on stock setup, set up your stock, be the end of it. You don't have to go that, use a, that information if you don't want to. If you wanna go back to the old method in 2022 and prior, you very well could. All the simulator options are still there. All the simulator, uh, Simulator options, the simulator settings, the fixture settings, all of that is still in there that you can use in the simulator options. It's just, do you wanna verify using the machine group information or do you wanna verify using the simulator options information? The plan with that, and I'll, I know this is a little vague because they were a little vague with me about this. The plan for this is to be a foundation for something much bigger down the road, um, which, you know, probably not the first time you've heard that before with the function. Um, but the plan is that we're going to have more intelligence between the master file, master, master part and the stock. And if I were to guess, probably get some more stock recognition right out of the gate from mill, similar to what we have in lathe, but that is just speculation at that point. Um, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm unfortunately not in the know in that. And I don't think any of us are, unless you're, uh, in the boardroom of Mastercam corporate. Um, but definitely, uh, definitely some, uh, Definitely some improvements there and definitely trying to re redirect the uh, workflow there. Next is machine simulator set on a per machine basis. This is a real quick one, um, but used to in older versions of Mastercam, uh, you know, you could set a machine simulation uh, machine. So like in this case, the five axis uh, uh, table table machine, you could set that in the on the config level. But you know, if you change from a horizontal to an HMC and you had a simulator for both, you'd ultimately want to use one or the other. So now in 2023, we can set the simulation on a per machine basis. So in this case, 
you now have more control there and it'll be able to uh, pull on the machine when you open up that, that, that machine in post. So in 2023, there's also a new tool page layout. Honestly, it's all the same information. They've just taken that empty space that always drove me crazy. They've made the tool list more horizontal. Um, so now you get a lot more information from it rather than having to scroll left or right. Um, at first, I thought this was a little intimidating, but I was actually surprised how quickly my muscle memory picked this up. Because if you look down at the bottom left, it's the same information in the same kind of layout as it was before. If you look at the bottom right, it's the same information, same layout as before. Or as before. But these three main sections have now just been moved around. So, you know, tool number, length offset, diameter offset, those are all still grouped the same amount. So um, a lot of my muscle memory is not going against me there. And they're just taking advantage of more horizontal real estate. And I think I see a question here from John. Uh, will the lay side recognize when you did a circle mill op to take the stock out of a part for a further boring op? As of right now, John, um, there was no enhancements done to that. And there was no enhancements made um, as far as I'm aware. Um, the the workflow we did before was to, and I know you, you brought up a follow-up question about saying there was a dummy drill or creating a dummy drill and then using that as your reference. Um, the workflow we had in the past was to create a stock model and then in that stock model option, there was try to recreate the turn profile. Um, I can follow up with you after that, after after this session, and we could talk a little bit more about that to see if you've uh, gone down that rabbit hole and if that didn't work for you and potentially see if we can come up with a better solution than making a dummy drill. So as of right now, 2023, I'm not aware of any changes to that, to that um, but, um, I can look into that afterwards as well. Um, another big change to tool pathing is just lifting restrictions. So if you guys have used slot mill in the past, um, if you guys use slot mill in the past, uh, the tool path would be very, very picky about your chains, specifically making sure there's two parallel lines um, that I could use for a more traditional slot. But you can see here, this is curved around. Now really it supports any closed boundary. So it doesn't have that limitation anymore. Um, I've even I've even done a square hole, although it does look a little weird with that. I would probably end up using dynamic or rough at that point. But now slot mill has that restriction lifted. Um, so we can now do slot mill tool paths on something that's not your standard slot. A couple more mill enhancements. Now we're kind of dripping into 3D. So now OptiRough and Area Rough now supports undercut stock recognition. Now, to be clear, it doesn't support undercut specifically and now can recognize where we've already cut from the bottom side. If you guys have been through one of my classes, one of the things we do talk about um, here and there, depending on depending on uh, where we are on time, one of the things we do talk about here and there is the fact that when you do stock recognition through OptiRef or create an OptiRef situation, it can only see material that we've cut away from the top view. Um, in 2023, no longer the case. We now have a checkbox. It's a little small there, so I apologize. I should have made it a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, we now have a checkbox that says detect undercut stock. So it's going to see and check to see if we've already cut this from the bottom. So in this case we did. So you can see from the top to the bottom, it is removing a good chunk of tool motion, which in the past what we have to do to get around that is to do some clever uh, constraints like steep and shallow or uh, tool path control with containment boundaries. But in this case, neither of those options would have worked for us because of that cavity, which again, is hard to see, that cavity goes beneath where we got to from the top, from the other side. So super glad to see that come in. Definitely going to be super helpful when it comes to like three plus two operations where you're roughing it from one side and you're roughing it from the other side. It knows now, uh, if you have that checked, of course, that where you've already cut from the other side. So changing how it calculates, which is um, definitely a plus there. OptiRough's linking parameters has now been updated. So if you guys recall from 2022, um, if you guys recall from 2022, we transitioned most of the 3D toolpaths to a new linking parameters page. And you can see there on the right. Now in 2023, they've fully committed to OptiRough, AriRough, and I believe a couple others that weren't, that didn't come along for the ride. Those are now in the new linking parameters page. So. Again, giving you more control, having multiple leads. Um, also, just trying to take care or take more use of the real estate there. So you'll see that the transition motion has been moved into here because it's technically a linking motion. Um, but other than that, all the same controls, just with a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that has now been integrated and now the new linking parameters 
is here for the OptiRough. AeriRough now supports zigzag motion. Pretty self-explanatory, but something we've been kind of wanting for a while. So if you use an area rough toolpath, you see you only had the option to do climb or conventional. Now you can also have the option for zigzag. Water lines optimize has been changed from 2022 to 2023. Not that it's changed the calculation, but used to we had this problem where you had three options. You had by depth, you had optimized, and then you had bottom to top. But if you did bottom to top, you didn't have the ability to use optimi optimize. It just went back to using by depth. So now in 2023, we have by depth and we have optimize, but then now there's a checkbox for bottom to top. So now we can use both optimize and bottom to top when before we really couldn't do that. So definitely happy to see that for situations where I'm coming from bottom to top. And if you guys were curious about what's the difference between by depth and optimize, by depth is cutting the entire part at one depth then moving up, cutting the entire part at one depth, moving up. So let's say you had a boss far, far to the left and you had a boss far, far to the right. It'll cut on one boss, move over, cut on the second boss, move over, cut on the first boss, boss, come over, cut on the second boss and keep jumping back and forth. Where Optimize is gonna focus in on one feature first, then move on to the next feature, then move on to the next feature, then move on to the next feature. So doing all the step ups or step downs on one feature at a time. So again, just giving more control and more more or more optimization to the bottom to top. Some more mill enhancements. So scallop and equal scallop now has what's called step in. So one of the big things to note here is equal scallop now has uh, rest machine. Um, for a few years now, that was the biggest thorn in equal scallop side is it didn't have rest machining like the old scallop did. Now it does. Um, but on top of that, both operate, both toolpaths now have what's called step in, which basically, and again, I apologize, I went a little overboard with this example, <laughs> got a little too many passes. Um, but we now have the ability to do almost multi passes if it sees stock in a certain area. So almost like a semi finished kind of operation. So now the equal scallop can, equal scallop can now do kind of multi passes to kind of clean out a corner a little more, uh, a little more uh, safely. So it's going to take, in this case, a tooth out cut, uh, tooth out cut at a time, get closer and closer until it takes its finished pass. So um, multi-pass is equal scallop. Uh, I'm excited for that, and I can't wait to find different different situations to use it in where I just want to clean out a corner a little bit more and maybe even finish it in one operation. One thing I will note about the equal scallop, um, the trim to stock, Currently, you can only set it as the roughing tool. You can't use like a stock model like we can in some other 3D tool paths, and you can't use a CAD file. Right now, you can only define the tool diameter of the corner radius, um, but hopefully we'll be seeing more of that in the future. Check holder now has stock awareness. Unfortunately, I couldn't find or couldn't make a good example for this uh, at the or uh, by the time of this presentation, um, but it is as it says. Now, if you have stock defined, in the toolpath, if you turn on check holder, used to it only check against your model geometry. Now it'll fully check against your stock. So of course, if it sees that the holder is about to collide with the stock, um, whether it's like a way above or way below or well, way above, or if there's like an overhang, uh, it will trim that out as well. So happy to see that too. Preview toolpath has been added to 3D, the so 3D toolpaths. Um, back in 2022, they added preview toolpath to the multi-axis, so the next logical step was to add it to the 3D toolpaths as well. And with this change, there's also a, a little bit of a change on how to trigger it. Um, so I've taken the icon from 2022, I've brought it into 2023, and I made a little op or translucent there. So used to we'd hit a button at the top to preview our toolpath, but now to get the same behavior, all we have to do is hit the apply button. So now the apply button has some additional behavior that when you hit the apply button, it's going to preview the toolpath if the generate toolpath is checked. If you have that generate toolpath to the left unchecked, it goes back to the old behavior of apply. With that generate toolpath checked, if you hit apply, it's essentially going to preview the toolpath for you and you'll be able to see it off of your screen. And that is the case for 2D, 3D, and multi-axis. So, um, yeah, so no more preview toolpath at the top, it's now just the apply button. Now we'll get into multi-axis. So probably the biggest thing that you're gonna notice when you get into multi-axis in 2023 is no longer do we have the morph parallel along curve that has now been consolidated to the unified toolpath. 
So in 2022, they introduced the unified toolpath and the unified toolpath had the capability of doing a morph, doing a parallel, doing a long curve. The difference between those is if you use a morph toolpath instead of the unified, you were basically stuck with a morph. Um, if you did a morph style toolpath within the unified, you basically have all the same controls as morph, but if you decided to change your mind and say, oh no, I want a parallel. Oh no, I want a long curve. You could do that without having to undo all your work. Um, so they've taken the next step and they flat out taken the manual functions out of there and just brought it all into the unified. It was technically already in there. Um, in, a, in, a, in an attempt to uh, try to clarify and give you more flexibility. Again, these are the same tool paths. They're just now under the umbrella of unified. So that way you could change between them as you go. And you, once you set it to morph motion or a morph style tool path, you'll get the same options you had in morph. When you set it to a parallel motion, you're gonna get the same options you had in parallel. If you set it to um, a long curve, you're gonna get the same options you had in a long curve and et cetera. Um, and when you now open up a older file that has say a morph, a parallel, or a project curve or a long curve, those will now be migrated into a unified toolpath. So again, all those settings are being are being um, contained or are staying consistent. It's just now it's under an umbrella of the unified toolpath, which you can flip between them without having to basically undo all your work and start over with a parallel or start over with a morph. So um, just a quick thing to look out for there. All those tool paths are now in the unified. Next, I'll talk about the deburr for a little bit. So the deburr now supports chamfer mills. So used to, you can only use a lollipop and a ball in mill. That's no longer the case. You can now use a chamfer mill. And I know this is a very simplistic example, but just to show you that I'm using a deeper tool path with the chamfer mill, and I'm just cutting a real quick chamfer on that outside. Um, so I just wanted to get a quick picture of that. We now have the ability to accept chamfer mills. We also now have the, the ability to accept other tool types as well. Anything with a wall, like a sidewall to it. Um, and you'll see why here in a second. So if you had a chamfer on the outside of a part, if you had a chamfer on the outside edge of your part, um, a lot of times what we would do is use a swarf tool path to take the side of an end mill to basically cut that chamfer. However, using a swarf end mill, or I'm sorry, a swarf tool path, whether you use the old style swarf or the new style swarf, um, you'd have to make sure that your sinking is consistent. You'll have to make sure that you grab the top rail and the lower rail at the right order. You'll have to make sure that, um, of course, you don't have the same, uh, you have the same number of entities or you have sink lines and all that stuff that you had to kind of be aware of or surface fanning and all that. Now, to get that same motion, Deburr can create a swarf-like tool motion without any of the headache of making, working about sinking, worrying about um, uh, fanning, surface consistency, and all that stuff. So in this case, in this example, we now have a checkbox. And in, case, in this case, I have a flat end mill, so this is the only option I have. Um, it's going to allow me to establish where on the tool I want that to make contact with my edge. In this case, I'm back plotting it. And all I did was grab that solid edge. I told it I wanted a chamfer size, I think around 50 thou or so. Um, and it's going to figure out the tilting. It's going to do all this for me um, without having to have the chamfer drawn, half the rails drawn, and uh, all, that, all that good stuff, I guess. Now, granted, Swarf could still work here. We just have to make sure we draw the chamfer um, and do everything there, but now, the deburr, just adding to its arsenal, can uh, now just cut the chamfer with the side of the tool. Now this includes flat end mills like I'm doing here. You can use a ball end mill. You can use even a tapered end mill. Anything with a sidewall to it um, is pretty much fair game from what I've been told. Um, so definitely, definitely happy to see that. And I believe that's it, guys, on at least on my end here. All right, you guys should be seeing my screen again. Just a couple things to wrap up here. The what's new.mastercam.com here. You just go to what's new.mastercam.com and it'll redirect to this slightly longer link. But here you can go through all the different, you know, there's the highlights, then they break it out by topic. And a lot of the stuff Devin covered today, like if I go to 3D tool pass and detecting undercut stock, it'll it'll give you a longer description on on what that does. 
but it's it's all in here. If for whatever reason you want to go back and review, we also have all the previous releases up to a certain point on on here. We we typically go about four four versions back, but you can look through here. I appreciate everybody's time today. Devin, thanks as well. But everyone, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks, Devin.